Hey there, this is Troy Baker, and this is a piece of shit. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Piece from It podcast, the podcast where we sit around this table and talk about some snacks. Some snacks. A list of snacks. <laughs> James has the list. Go, from? James. Go, James. From Disney Rand. We're going to rank Disneyland snacks mm-hmm. for the first half. And then the second half, of course, it's Magic Monday, as always. Because it's a Magic Monday. On YouTube.com slash derailed. <laughs> you can catch us on YouTube. You can like us and subscribe. You can go to Twitter and you can follow. You can go to Patreon.com and support the show. And you can get the audio on iTunes and SoundCloud. And don't forget, Wes, it's Bring Your Friend to Derailed Month. So don't forget to bring your friend to Derailed. Watch an episode that you think is extra funny. Share it with them. Laugh about it. Talk about it. More than likely an episode where you're all making fun of me. <laughs> Which one isn't? <laughs> True. <laughs> they need more. We got to keep giving them what they want. You know what I mean? Oh, is your book breaking? It's been broken. Been, it's been breaking. It's, it's been, been bre- broken. It's been a been breaking. It's very broken. It's a loot crate. You got this too, right? No. no? I stopped loot crate a long time ago. I think before that, like right as that one was the one in there. Mm. Because there was like four or five months where it was just shit in every box. Yep. Mm. That's why I switched to just loot wear. Wes, never been at Disneyland. I have. Once. Once. Did you have any snacks? I remember candy. What kind of candy? Not those kind of snacks, though, really. I was in like third and fourth grade. I don't remember much of the trip. Oh. You don't remember much at all. He probably didn't go to the Blue Bayou either. Probably not. No, no. (laughs) You need a res. You never tried a churro? No. Turkey leg? No. Corn dog? Probably. Okay. Corn dog from Corn Dog Castle? Corn dog from Disneyland. No. So you don't know? (laughs) No. And then there's other, apparently in Cars Land, there's a mac and cheese with bacon in a cone. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's supposed to be pretty damn good. I remember smelling it when we were trying to get on the ride. That just sounds like (laughs) it would hurt you a lot. If it's real cheese, which it probably Probably is not. (laughs) And then the other thing, was there another thing? What's the list? Oh, the Dole Whip. The Dole Whip. The list. We got, those are it. It's the, or sorry, six things. Six things. So this is six snacks from Disneyland? Six snacks. Mm -hmm. Ranked. Okay. Rank them. So number six. Number six. uh, Well, it'll just be random. Oh, we're going to rank it. We're going to rank it. Okay. Yeah. So the first one will go with the Dole Whip, which is the staple of Disneyland. Mm. (laughs) What's the Dole Whip? Apparently, adding giant pickle to this. Apparently, it's only available in Disneyland. I would say say it's the staple of Disneyland. I would say Disneyland is its staple. Yeah, I guess. That would make sense. Well, that's what people it's talk about all the time. It's not the staple of Disneyland. <laughs> For food-wise. Like a quick... Are you kidding me? It's all people talk about is Dole Whips. You're crazy. Crazy. The staple of Disneyland is the Dole Whip. Listen, man. Food-wise. I've been, to, I've been to Disneyland a lot of times. Creamed. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so you can see my uh, I think first your time pin update from needs last to be installed. Year. Uh-huh, that's a Dole Whip. <laughs> they also have a Dole Whip float too. If you pay like a dollar more, you can get it's it float pineapple style. ice creamish yeah. stuff okay. that you carry around and you, and it's yeah. it's in a cup and, and it's it's like pineapple soft serve. Okay, it's yeah. hot. It's refreshing. Cool. It's refreshing. Yeah, we want to hot outside. That's refreshing. Okay. Um, what do they mix it in for the float? Uh, juice. yeah. Okay. So pineapple on You can't pineapple. really mm-hmm, mm-hmm. can't really throw a root beer in there. <laughs> Sprite? <laughs> Ugh. I'd try it. Sierra Mist, maybe. It's the same fucking thing. It's not for me, though. Lemon I've lime said soda. this a million times. Lemon lime soda. Sprite for me is more pungent. Like, when I, the first time I drink Sprite, it burns like fuck. Because that has more carbonation. Sure. But it's I the think same the difference flavor... between Pepsi and Coke. Coke just adds more carbonation. Pepsi adds more syrup. Yep. It's the same thing. Very different flavors, though. Yeah, one it's is not different flavors. One is sweeter. One is has more it of a hurts. bite to it. Yeah, it's carbonation. But I feel like syrup. the flavor is much different. Like I could. Drink... I don't like the texture of Sierra Mist. Just throwing that out. There. <laughs> <laughs> so liquid. 
<laughs> just, it's just a texture thing for me. Okay. Seven Up is a much better texture. Fair enough. Die. What about slice? <laughs> slice. Old soda. Was old old slice soda? Old no. school. Yeah. They had orange slice, yeah. lemon lime slice, and oh yeah, and then sun kissed. Kicked it around the, and beat it up, and it went away. <laughs> like a uh, RC Cola? Fucking A, man. RC Cola's still around, though. And I actually prefer RC Cola a lot of times. I like over, RC Cola, too. Over Coke and Pepsi? Dad's Old Fashioned Root Beer. Yep. Dad's is awesome. Yep. If I do a root beer float, I like Dad's Root Beer. Mm-hmm. A&W's pretty good, though, too. I go guess on. we should also talk about IHOB. Oh, oh my God. God. Now that we're getting on this <laughs> yes. bullshit. We should. So, number six, Dole Whips. Okay. Number five, Mac and Cheese Cup. No, we will afterwards. We want to rank this first. It's my fucking show. I wanted to insert it in the middle, sir. <laughs> okay, well, go ahead. Good grief. Number five. Go ahead, blow it up. James, welcome to James's <laughs> piece of kercher. This is piece of kercher for you. Take it away. <laughs> Mac and Cheese Cone. Never had it. Never had so it So, Mac and Cheese in a cone with yeah. bacon. It's at the bottom. All right. Uh, turkey leg. Pretty high. Yeah. Right now, I'm going to rank it at So this is just three. a big-ass turkey leg. It's just a fucking turkey Same leg, Same thing you'd get it's at a awesome. Renaissance fair. Okay. There was because... a myth that it was ostrich. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and do they season it with anything, or is it just rotisserie style? Rotisserie style. Okay. Yeah. They kind of just, just like... It's just fun to walk around the park with a big-ass turkey it's leg. It's delicious for some reason. I don't know if it's like injected with Coke or something. Probably. Coca-Cola in there? Coca-Cola turkey? Yeah. My sister used to always get it, Reba, and I used to think she was crazy to want a turkey leg, mm-hmm. and then I tried it, and it was Yeah, a amazing. turkey leg while walking around a hot It was just park. weird. I was like, yeah. what the fuck are we well, doing Well, that's here? what they do at Renaissance Fairs, too. It's beat-ass hot outside. True. There's no Renaissance Fair in the winter, where it's like people are cold. It's always during the summer and shit. Even Florida, the one over here in Bonnie Lake, where it's it's fucking August, and it's like it feels like it's a hundred degrees outside. But their corn dogs are hot. I mean, it's not really like a hot thing. It's like mm-hmm. it's just weird because it's like bare. It's just weird. You feel very barbaric. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but oddly enough, they taste like ham, which works on a Renaissance fair. Mm-hmm. It's weird because you're with a bunch of regularly dressed yeah. people at a theme park, <laughs> and you're like, I'm eating something that should be at a Renaissance fair. Well, it's or, like standing in front of Pirates of the Caribbean or the or, Cars ride. Yeah. Or. Or. The whole or, cast of Persona 5 is there, too. Sure. If you're <laughs> racist. <laughs> uh, I'm going to also throw, I don't think this is on the list, but the... Uh, uh, Gumbo bread bowl that you can get outside the Blue Bayou and by the. I'll add that to the list. The. The Matterhorn. roller coaster? Nope. Big Thunder Mountain? Nope. Splash Base, Mountain. Splash Mountain. We get there at some point. Yeah, there's <laughs> only so many rides. So, do you know where to get all of these treats? Let's do that too. Where do you get Dole Whips? Uh, there's a bunch of stands. Primarily, where do you get them from? There's one particular place. Your favorite, your favorite little. I mean, you can get them there. Yes, you can get them in Adventureland. Well, the Tiki Hut. You get them in front of the Tiki Hut. That's Adventureland. Right when you walk into Adventureland. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm talking about the specific location. I Adventureland's know. the whole thing. What? Well, it's in it. We're in the. I'm so- following the I'm- criteria of how it was rated. We're on Earth. We're not in the solar system because the solar system is the whole thing. <laughs> We're on Earth, okay? Like you get the mac and cheese cone only at Cars Land. We're, that's specific, yeah. But turkey legs, Dole whips, churros, corn dogs—they're they're corn dogs everywhere. Are only at the corn dog castle. No, you can get corn dog. There's corn dog stands all over the place. I understand that, but that's how it was rated by from the specific location. This. Why can't I provide information? <laughs> That's ex- that's the criteria that came with the rating. You have I I'd, all I wanted was a list of the foods. I don't okay. really care what they what they're saying or whatever. Because okay, the churro they rated was was super weird, right? Yeah. Because they tried a, a specific churro, right? And I'm just talking about the churros, which I think would be better than this weird strawberry thing that they tried. It's like a princess strawberry churro yeah. thing that you get at the Sleeping Beauty's castle. Okay, I've tried it. It's not good. So. 
I mean, explain, it's okay. Explain the love of the churro, because you're not the you're oh, nowhere man. near the only person who's told me that Disneyland churros are the best churros ever. It's a it's a combination of size, okay, and I don't know, man. Disney magic, kinda. Well, you'd think that it's a cart. It's probably dried out. It's probably like, uh, you know, but it's it's. I don't know. It's it's crispy on the outside and it's chewy on the inside and it's huge. And it just do is... they give you like a dip with it, or you just eat no, it? No, no, no. They just roll it in the cinnamon sugar and right. put you. They give you a little a wrap, and you're on your way. You know, I am upset that the chimichanga is not on here. The chimichanga is bonkers good. It was and real good. The tamales, which I'm not sure that they even have anymore because I didn't try them last time. We definitely um, had the chimichanga though. Oh yeah. Some other people I know who've been recently tell me that the Monte Cristo mm-hmm. at the Blue that's Bayou, number one. That's on here. That's number one. We're not okay. there yet, Wes. Okay. Even though it's not a snack. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. a dine-in place. So this... It's number one, but it shouldn't be... I'm a... just providing information. Exactly. James. <laughs> it's not a snack. I know it's not a snack. It's a $21 meal. Well, tell meal. them it's not a snack. <laughs> $21 meal. Oh, geez. I forgot how much I paid for that. Yeah. It's so good, though. When you're there, you forget about how much money you spent taking to the hotel room that night, huh? Mm. Oh, yeah. So until you're leaving for the airport, yeah. and you're like... What the fuck? <laughs> Did they take out the <laughs> hotel fee already? And then the rental car. Oh, oh. my God. That was terrible. But yeah. Then next, officially, we, we didn't really, we hit on it, but we didn't talk about it yet. The corn dog, apparently, is the, is hey, the corn best. Dog. I'm hitting on you. What's up, it's, corn dog? The dog is like Costco-sized hot dog on the inside, and then just surrounded by wonderful cake. It's like a pancake. Around no, no, I'm sorry. It's they not compared, a pancake. It's a corn. It's cornmeal. Corn it's cornmeal. Yeah. yeah, it's a normal. It's a. It's a very good cornmeal corn corn dog. It's like put pattern. a hot dog in your favorite cornbread, mm-hmm. and that's okay. what it is. Matter. Yeah. And then corn the corn yeah, that's it. Chimichanga, and All then right. you added the gumbo. So, so, number one. I don't care what they're what they're saying. No, I'm I, going I from the bottom. Yeah. Not number one. I don't want to start with number one. I was just going to list them again. That's all I was going to do. I was going to say, okay, number one, Dole Whip, and then how do you rate it? Well, then don't say number one. Okay. Good grief, man. Just say, this the, is just a say list. the name. No number. Number one, but we're going to rank it a different number. <laughs> okay. First up. Is that good? I don't know. First up. <laughs> I don't even know what we're doing. <laughs> rank him, Aaron. <laughs> rank the ones he says. And then I'll... Do you want to do individual ranks or... Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I'm going to say gumbo at the bottom. Okay. Which is not a bad thing. Because there are still, we're not listing a bunch of yeah, snacks. Yeah, this is, this is. There's pretzels, there's ice cream, there's this and that and blah, 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 blah. This is blah, the blah, best blah. of what's there. Yes. Okay. Gumbo. Gumbo in a bread bowl. Mm-hmm. The bread bowl is sourdough bread bowl, and it's fantastic. I can see that. Turkey leg. Mm-hmm. I get that one. Dole Whip. Because mm. it's refreshing on that hot day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's not, my, it's not my favorite. Corn Dog. Okay. Mm. Churro Monte Cristo. Okay. You forgot the mac and cheese cone. I've never tried it. Okay. So you're just going to leave it out? Yeah. Never had it. I can't rate it. So the Monte Cristo. Mm-hmm. Ham and cheese sandwich. On deep set, fried. Deep fried, so it's kind of French toast style. Served with jam. Served with jam and powdered sugar. Mm-hmm. And, okay, that doesn't sound like, in my head, thinking of those ingredients separately, it should You never had a Monte Cristo? No. Wow. But I keep seeing it on, like, you keep talking about it, Food Network, that kind of stuff. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I want to try one. I want to find a place that makes a decent one. Right? Yeah, There's you a, should. It's it's amazing. Did Washington ever have a Bennigan's mm-hmm. no. out here? Because that was a, their number one, um, like, entree at Bennigan's on the East Coast, which is what that movie Waiting is made fun of. Shenanigans? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, no, not shenanigans. Oh, the name of their restaurant. In waiting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was about Bennigan's. <laughs> um, I've heard Mitzel's makes a decent one. Ooh, that's twice Fucking Mitzel's, came Mitzel's up today. has it. That's right. Dude, Mitzel's is pretty good. For some reason, their hash browns are bomb. Never been there. Don't know why. It's good for breakfast. I think, because we're going to dinner tomorrow with Jerry, mm-hmm. but I kind of want breakfast too. I don't have a. I'd be down to try Mitzel's. It. Why can't money grow on trees, Wes? If it wasn't twenty five dollars for the fucking buffet, it's fifteen. Is it fifteen for sure? Yeah. Okay, because I thought Jerry said twenty five. 
No, no, no. Okay. Where are you guys it's going 15. to dinner? King's King buffet. buffet. We went there for lunch. They have a ten dollar lunch, and dinner's like fifteen or sixteen bucks. It's really good. Asian buffet. Yeah, yeah. Because I know like the one in in Kent, the super buffet is okay. Yeah. Like, but most of the uh, most like, buffets I've been to have been okay. Yeah, because it's not meant to be good. like really good food. It's supposed to be like you're eating a fuck ton of food. Don't care about the quality. Yeah, and this is like not the best food at all, but it's like ten fucking dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, see so if like that ten fifteen. I'd like to go to like Mongolian grills. Mm-hmm. And well, so they have a Mongolian grill. Do they have sushi? Like they I have sushi. I don't care because I hate sushi. But I, but they have sushi. Uh, they have a Mongolian grill. They even have uh, hibachi. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice pho. Yeah, I didn't see pho. Soups, but no. Yeah, they have like pho. wonton soup and okay. hot yeah. and sour. Hmm. Yeah, and that's the one in Renton on on the main drag, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I hob. I hob. I don't get to rate anything. I was I was a dead <laughs> air. You had some time. I was I, waiting on Wes to I be like, I've only had one thing. There. I I've had a corn dog. Corn we dog got you that shirt go. from Universal. Yeah. Stating you. facts at this point so that we don't have dead air. <laughs> okay. You rank them, James. So I don't I never had the gumbo or the mac and cheese cone. So if I'm going wow, this is tough. I'd say Dole Whip's at the bottom for me. Then I would say, oh, turkey leg. Then Turkey leg and chimichanga I would tie. That's kind of what I'm doing. Turkey leg and then chimmy. But at, like, either ones, I'll eat them both at the same fucking time. I don't care. Mm. <laughs> With, uh, like, churros in between these fingers. Yeah. <laughs> you're just like... Then I'm going to have to go... Oh, man. Wow. I'm gonna have to go corn dog then churro. The churro blew my fucking mind. What about Monte Cristo? You're right. That's number one. <laughs> you got the list in front of him and forgets one. Because I'm looking at it going, I, I thought I said Monte Cristo, but I didn't. <laughs> it was below mac and cheese. He doesn't like it. But the mac and cheese kind of looks pretty fucking awesome though. Let's like, go it to looked real good. Mitzel's for breakfast. I hob for lunch. <laughs> and be dead and, by dinner. <laughs> and then be broke by dinner. So, yeah, International House of Burgers is real now. So, I didn't hear about the burgers thing till today. Yes. Did you hear about Pancake King? Yes, I saw that. <laughs> Burger. But it was like, last night I saw stories like, okay, I hob, I hop is changing the name to I hob. Oh, you we can don't, say I hob. It is I hob now, isn't mm-hmm. it? And they're like, oh, we don't know what the B is going to stand for. Maybe it's going to stand for breakfast. Everyone thought breakfast. Yeah. Ooh. And then they come out today. It's like, oh, we have these new burgers, so we're going to be International House of Burgers. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay, I want. Pancakes. I never knew that the topic of I hop would make me learn so much about a person because there's someone at work that I don't know very well, and we were discussing I hop, and. I was like, it's burgers. And they were like, yeah, that's that sounds great. And I was like, what? That's so weird. And they're like, I never, they said, I never go to IHOP and get breakfast. And I was like, what? I don't know how to talk to you anymore. <laughs> like, all I ever get is is the burgers at IHOP. And I'm like, there's, I thought there's just one burger. <laughs> Apparently the steaks are good. Really? Yeah. Uh, uh, somebody from Giant Bomb was talking about IHOP and, and was like, started talking about, oh yeah, their burgers are probably going to be good because their steaks are great. And everyone was like, God, you get the steaks at IHOP? What? And he's yes. like, yeah, they're fantastic. And so he took everyone to IHOP. Oh, I got a steak at Denny's one time and it was terrible and I'll never do it again in my life. Apparently IHOP has good steaks. IHOP just sounds so weird. To- yeah. Oddly enough, the only thing that's not breakfast that I actually liked a lot at IHOP is their fish sandwiches are actually no. really good. The Mott Sticks. Well, but that's, I mean. That's where this came from. Yeah. Can I get an order of Mott's? Mott's. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's so fucking weird. There, um, if you look at IHOB's Twitter account now, it's pretty fucking funny. I saw Everybody's like, what apart. the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah, it was, um, someone had posted a big thing online of all of the other restaurant social medias just yeah. talking A&W, about this. A&W, like, flipped there. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, we don't know what it means yet. Yeah. We're just kind of doing it because we're W&A. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, Wendy's is like, are you guys worried that they're going to come after burgers? No, we don't do breakfast, so why should we care? Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Everyone. And some people, Wendy's Twitter is notoriously pretty gnarly, though. Yeah. I like how, I think it was Alan at work that uh, described it as, like, a little kid throwing a fit. Yeah. Because they have to, like, 
they're they're I guess failing whatever in the food industry I guess and like oh, GameStop's Twitter got in trouble. Actually, this is for your podcast. Okay, never mind. And uh, are we gonna have time on my podcast for what? Anything not E three related? It is E three related. Oh, okay. And uh, I forgot what I was saying now. <laughs> Welcome to Magic Monday. It's Magic Monday. I I forgot, so go ahead. <laughs> I'm stalling till he can remember. It's probably going to be a while. Magic Monday. <laughs> We're going to get it in a text later. Magic Monday. <sighs> Magic Monday. Nothing? No. Did you get your email yet? Uh, did not get a notification. So I got my arena code. Negative. Oh, nice. I thought I had it, because it's like, oh, Gmail notification. I never get an email this late, and it's him picking up fucking Destiny for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're nope. welcome. Nope. When did you sign up for it? Uh, two, three months ago? Two or three months ago. Hmm. And how quick before you... Got your code. About a month and a half later. Damn. I didn't get a... That wasn't even a... Oh, no, it was a code. I was like, it wasn't even a code. It was just like, click the download link. But no, it was a code. Yeah, they give you a download mm-hmm. link and a code. Because you have to put the... Yeah. I already downloaded the fucking software. You just need that beta <laughs> code? Yeah. Berta. So, MTG Arena is what we're talking about. We're talking about this because it is in beta, and it is the... Kind of new Magic Online. All, there's already Magic the Gathering Online, and it's a program that's from like 1995, and it's awful. Uh, it just looks like garbage, but you can actually play Magic, and it's every bit of Magic. And it's okay. It's Magic. But it's just fucking old and terrible. And this is like, hey, we're getting our ass kicked by Hearthstone. We're going to make Magic look a little more like Hearthstone. Duels was kind of cool, but not really. I don't even know why they didn't just like use some of that stuff because it wasn't terrible. Maybe they needed to. Ground. They just totally like blew up duels and just forgot about it. Yeah. I also got my first my my DCI number so I can play in stores. Oh, nice. Yeah. How do you do that? Create a Wizards account. Oh, gotcha. I do not have that. You gotta go if we're gonna draft on Friday. You gotta do it because they have to. You have, you have to give them your DCI number. Mm. So, arena, I'm in. You're in. I played it mm. till two thirty in the morning last night. Oh damn! Yeah. So you did you start with three <laughs> of every standard booster pack and then like two, one to four of every card from Kaladesh and Aether Revolt? Yes. And then all the starter decks. The starter decks, yeah. Yep. Yep, yep. So when they updated it, did you get three packs from each of the new sets they I got they three put? packs from Kaladesh and Aether Revolt. Because those gotcha. are the only two they added from when cool. I started. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so I kind of juked the system a little bit. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I submitted a ticket through their website that I, w- I had registered like last year and still hadn't gotten a code yet. So I did the it's just like put your email address in. When did you it's like a drop down menu of when did you when did you register? And then whatever. You can put your DCI number if you have one if it like matters or whatnot. But I did that and then like I did that at four forty and then at six ten I got a code. And I've been waiting for a while. Not that long. Yeah. But I <laughs> Like, I think May 19th is when I registered. Damn. Yeah. Or not. June? It's June right now, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so May 19th is when I registered. So it was about a, almost less than a month. But then we met this dude, his guy, at work, and he was like, oh, I'm going to get you in, dude. I run that shit. And then nothing. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, last ditch effort. I just really wanted to play. Did this little Reddit search, and it was like, here, use this link. And then did it, and then boom, two hours later, got a code. Nice. Pretty crazy. Nice. Yeah. I got, I, they also had a first time purchase, like $5, 2,500 gems, and Some, five packs. Yep. And that was, that's a really good deal because normally five bucks is like 750 gems. Yep. 
Two currencies, gold and gems. Yep. I think we talked a little bit about this last week, but now I have context. Okay. Uh, but I think it's great. I think it's what it needs. There's, there is some stuff that they need to add immediately if they want to keep going. Like what? Friends list. Mm. And be able to play friends. OMG, yes. True. I get it, though. They're in beta. They're yeah. just kind of stress testing everything. And um, I, I love the fact that, since you didn't see this, that you actually got to, um, you can draft all week now. Yes. Instead of only draft for like mm-hmm. nine, you, I would like, have been super bummed. Like have to wait ninety six hours and then you can draft for ninety six hours. Just quick Dominaria draft, quick. Well, like Aether right Revolt. now is quick Aether Revolt competitive Dominaria draft, right. and the competitive Dominaria draft you can't get in with gold. That's right. So if, that's why it costs fifteen hundred. Yep. Oh, because you're guaranteed competitive. you're getting a lot more packs, especially if you win. And then if you win the whole thing, you get like tw- if you get six wins, it's like twenty five hundred gems. Have you won a draft yet? Nope. I have my best record is. Three wins. I did not do too hot in my draft. Because that's what... Well, the first thing I did was a draft. I opened all my packs, and then I was like, I just want to draft. Yep. Because that's what, been, what I've been waiting for. And I did... I think I won twice. But they give you three losses? You get three losses. Yeah, so... So it's, I, it's Arena from Hearthstone. Right. And if you can get to the max, you're guaranteed minimum one pack extra. Mm-hmm. So you're guaranteed four packs for one draft. Yeah. And then gems. Yeah. Now you always have a chance for bonus packs at the end too. So like, I think the first draft I did, I ended up getting three bonus packs. Mm. So I total of six packs for the price of one entry fee. How many mythic rare, uh, wild cards have you gotten? And like, what, what have you traded them in for? Um, so I traded, uh, mostly planeswalkers. Funny enough. Really? Um, well, I tried making I them. I had Chandra already, and that's the one I needed for my. Well, you get four of each Chandra from the. Yeah. Or four of two different Chandras. I've gotten the another. Torch of Sh- Defiance is the one I'm using in my red black aggro standard deck. Mm-hmm. Um, I already had four of her. It's yeah. Awesome. I'm trying to build a blue, black, blue, red, or mono red energy theme deck, mm-hmm. but I'm missing some stuff. Mm. Um, but, like, I've got the. I got a Murfo- legendary Murfolk because I was trying to make the Murfolk deck work, but I don't have the stuff. I might try again with all the new cards. Nice. I got the Minotaur Pirate, red black for the pirate deck, because hmm. the pirate deck is fun. I like the raid ability. Hmm. Do you like Karn as a card? Not my style. Yeah. Like legitimately my I've style. I've played play- against it a couple times in competitive. Mm-hmm. I've, after I did my draft, I did um, competitive with... because af- after the packs that I opened, my wild cards that I got, I opened my my vault and you, got a yep. bunch of wild cards. Yep. And so after all of that and doing the draft and everything and winning packs and gold and whatnot, I decided to build a, a, a standard deck, red, black, aggro, and I had, like, most of it. I only had to wild card a couple things. Mm-hmm. I'm still working on it. It's not complete yet, but I've been able to fill in the gaps where I need it. And, and, you know, it's you're building a deck, so you're going to have to lose a couple times, see what doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, but, man, I was doing real well. Mm-hmm. Um, some decks you're going to come up across that just suck. Yeah. Red deck wins. Right. Um, there's this new blue artifact deck. That's I've, I've played against a couple times. It's all these cheap artifacts you keep returning to your hand and playing and gaining life when you do, and effects go double and triple. Because you play this card, I don't remember what it is, but basically you pay 50 life, and you can deal 50 damage to something. Okay. So you build yourself up to 51. Cool. 50 damage to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. <laughs> what card is that? Uh, Aether Reservoir? Crazy. Hmm. Um... Apparently, there's a card. So, spoilers for M19 as well. Okay. Have been coming out. Have you saw any? Seen any? Uh, not yet. Well, yeah, I saw some earlier, but it's like I, I'm not a fan of the core sets though. Why? Because they're usually nothing good in them. Like one or two good cards, and it's usually they're reprinting Lava Axe. They're reprinting uh, Trumpet Blast. Oh, give your stuff. Give all attacking creatures. That, no, they're reprinting that in Battle Bond. Uh, Battle Bond. For M19, too, I think. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm excited. I just want to play with some new cards. I've been look, I've been watching so much Dominaria drafts and playing usually with Dominaria cards when we do mini-masters. 
I'm looking forward to like so th- like diving into a set, playing a ton with it, and then a new set comes out doing the same. It's granted it's old cards, but for me it's new. It'll still be fun. So There's you a might new actually Planeswalker. Uh, so that's cool. You might actually like Return to Return to Ravnica then. Most of the internet does. You are in a. I I think it's about a sixty forty split from what I've seen. Agreed. And Agreed. I will give the sixty to in people favor are, uh, in favor. Sig- okay. mo- most people are happy with it. I thought it was a pretty cool set. I'm excited for it. There, I M- Max was talking to us about the uh, Eldrazi yeah. coming back. No, 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 no. Because M nineteen is reprinting this card that has no other purpose. Other than teaming up with Navigator's Compass <laughs> to combat the, uh, the the super powerful Drowsy, I will get more details and I'll text it to you. But he is suspicious that they're bringing it back. I mean, Ravnica doesn't have a villain yet. Exactly. So, like in every set, that, but Ravnica never has a villain. It's always just them. Yeah, it's the 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 guilds. guilds. But I'll get more info. And we'll, and I'll, I'll tell you. But there's some card that has like zero purpose in M19, and they think that with Navigator, he thinks that with Navigator's Compass in that card, it would be extremely, extremely useful with just the Eldrazi. Okay. Um, I'm trying to see, but yeah, ten, ten for five green mana. Yeah. Oh, that guy, yeah. With Isn't that no effect. V- what is his name? Verdonosaur or something? <laughs> What's that guy's Gigantosaurus. name? Gigantosaurus. Gigantos- Gigantosaurus? Gigantosaurus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gigantosaurus? Or that. That's what I thought it was. Gigantosaurus. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Magic does weird shit with it. Yeah, <laughs> Gigantosaurus. Oh, g- 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 <laughs> reprinting shock, reprinting a bunch of shit. M19's cool, man. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Everything you're just a hater. Yeah, if it's not it doesn't have Nintendo on it, you're not excited about it. That's not true. And you know what the hell are these? Wait, 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 wait. You were excited about that dumbass press conference, but you don't like anything magic. Oh, I love magic. Um, what are you these? Love to hate it. These what? um, that art style. I believe those are the foils. Oh. If okay. I if I'm, yeah. Well, no, because the foil, like, they have other foils on here. It's like the whole frame has changed. Oh, yeah, you're right. I don't know. I'm excited for it, and I want it. That I can get behind. Do you have any unglued lands? One planes I've had for about... Really? 15 <laughs> years, yeah. Any, do you have any other un lands? Un, no. Un lands. I have, That's the it, only un? That's the only un. I love the full art lands, though. I yeah. love it when they did it with Zendikar. Mm-hmm. Well, the un... Glued, I think, or like the full art, like no border. The Zendikar ones have a little border. And those are the ones that Max just bought, and they were like 50 bucks for three of each. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, like the swamps and the mountains were more, slightly more expensive. (laughs) Hmm. Yeah. Let me try and find the not altars. Okay. I have that planes. That's pretty cool. Which one? I love I have the planes. Oh, shit. Those are super retro looking. Damn. The thing is, you have to buy the unglued set and or the un, or is that unhinged? the unhinged, hinged, unbalanced, unglued, unstitched. broken, unglued, <laughs> unhinged, unscrewed, S- unscrewed, or unstitched, unimportant. <laughs> Fair enough. Underpants. <laughs> underpants. Captain underpants. <laughs> I'm for it. So yeah. I really like Arena, and I played it very late last night, and I'm going to play it very late again tonight. There's there's some stuff with the UI that's kind of bad. Like it, Talk to me. So the turns, not the turns, the um, you, you, you draw, your opponent yeah. draws their hand, Yeah. and especially if they go first and get a pick mulligan, you just sit there looking at no cards in your hand like, I could be deciding what I want, but okay, I'll wait. 
Sometimes Agreed. when you click Mulligan, it takes a little longer for you to get your stuff. That's beta, yeah. I, I totally have noticed that as um, well. Be- since they've redone the art and like you are now Tefiri and your opponent's always Jaya. Yeah, I don't what the fuck. Can't we, that'd be cool if we could pick that. I think we'll be able to pick that in the future. I hope so. Because I was looking through the settings, like I wanna I wanna change that. Because the first one you were um Jora, Captain of the Weatherlight, and your opponent was always Demon Lord from Dominaria, I don't remember his name. Gotcha. Um I'm thinking they'll add that because you can change like your deck boxes. You can. Yeah, you take drag when you're building your deck, drag whatever card you want to be your deck box oh. to the deck box. Whatever card you want. So like let's say you want Karn. Karn's in your deck, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want Karn to be on your deck box. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You can click on your card Karn in your stuff. What? <laughs> your stuff <laughs> <Click laughs> Karn on my stuff? <laughs> what? Click on the Slow car- down. Click on the Karn. Click on the Karn. In your collection. In my collection. Hold down the button. Hold down the left. Yes, <laughs> the click. Drag that to the deck box. So I'm dragging the card. Yes. Yeah. Okay. When you release it over the box, it'll replace the. Where art. is the box on your collection? So, like you, because on the right is where you're dragging the cards. Yeah. So here's where your stuff is. If you go up from there where the deck <laughs> name is, there's also your deck box up there. Oh, that's There's also cool. a button where you can switch the layout to look more like MTGO, <gasps> where the cards are here. Yes. Can you do that while you draft? I don't know. Haven't tried that. That's what I'm having trouble with is mana curve on my drafts is you have to remember exactly what you're picking. And then it's just on the side. Yep. And it's like, I'm not being, I'm not able to see it. Le- it well, there is two things that help with that. There is the, the box, the, the, the curve. Hearthstone thing. Yep. Yeah. And it always goes from least, most least expensive to most expensive than mana. Okay. What about I? Yeah, I guess, I guess that's good enough. Because you always have to... I count my creatures and my spells to make sure I got a 15-8 yep. thing. But you have to do that in MTGO, too. Okay. I'm for it. I just got to get used to that. Yep. Because I, mean, I, I like it down here and being able to see the... I don't yeah, know if like you've seen Yeah, like you have one, two drop, three drop, four yeah, drop. Yeah, and it yeah. organizes it for you. You click on it, it goes tink, and then, yeah. But, man, I'm, I, I, do you think they'll add a ch- economy to it like MTGO eventually? I mean, they want it to take over MTGO. If they wanted to take over MTGO, they'll have to give us a way to like sell cards for gems so we can just draft more mm-hmm. or something. Because once you get four of a set, you can't get more than four. Yeah. It just goes to the vault. It just goes to the vault. Yeah. Plus, any car- basically any card you open, percents go to the vault. And, and I'm okay with that. That totally works for me because I'm getting something out of it. Granted, you have to wait until you fill it up, which kind of sucks. It's not. But when you when you dust cards in Hearthstone, it's like, here's 10 Yeah, dust. commons, it's like, it's like 10 dust. Okay, that does nothing for... I would rather build up until I get something big anyways. Mm-hmm. So I think it's... They're on the right track for sure. I still don't think it's going to replace Hearthstone as like a phone at work game. I don't think so because either. Because Hearthstone is still quick. It, I like Some matches take me a while, but still, it's quicker. It is, yeah. Especially because you have to resolve everything too. Right. But um, that's okay. That's the inter- the intricacy and the strategy of, of that, of magic. And I'm okay with that as long as... I just... It sucked that... This such a great game was implemented so lazily on on computer in like a digital form, and now it's like this is a real game, and they they don't beat you down for playing it. Like MTGO literally is like you have to go three and zero or five and zero yeah. or whatever whatever to break even yep. to keep playing, and it's like that's like give me a couple losses, give me a couple mm-hmm. like it's it's fair. The economy might be a little off just because of gems and stuff like that, but. As far as rewards for playing and stuff, I, I've been able to continue playing with and not lose any gold. And actually, I'm making gold at this yeah, point. Yeah, because the quest, like you've seen, the quests are pretty good. They've modified, they've redone how the quests are, the, the daily one. Mm-hmm. It's like up to 10 now. Yeah. You get a random card in there at points. You get, yeah. uh, so far, it's just been what? Golden card, right? Because mm-hmm. it's like every two wins, you get a, a minimum of an uncommon. In every five wins, you get a pack, I think. Yeah. You, every five wins, Up you get a pack. 15 wins. Yeah. So a week. That's a week. But then the one before that's yeah. the daily wins, which card is card and gold. Gold, gold, gold card, gold card, something like yeah. that. It's great. It rewards you for playing. You want to keep playing. It, you get decent rewards for not 100% demolishing, you know, a tournament or something. And yeah. yeah. Um, they don't have, I wonder if they are going to implement tournaments. I. I think I read something like in July they are or something. Um, And then are they going to put M19 in it? M19 will go in probably at launch. That would be awesome. Because that's what they said in one of the things is when new sets come out at launch, they want it in arena. 
That's good. Appreciate now, that, that may or may not be for him, depending on how much work they have to do. Because at some point, it's going to come out of beta, and all of our collections are going to get reset. You think so? They, they've done every game that has a beta does it. It keeps everyone on equal footing. Oh, but usually, yeah, beta so. testers will get some form of bonus. So we might get bonus packs. We might get bonus um, myth uh, wild cards, something. And we'll still get the same 10 basic starter decks, which are pretty good starter decks. And you get all those cards mm-hmm. to build other decks with. Yeah. Just that to restart the collection. That's fine. I like building collection. And then there will, there will be bundles down the line. You might even be able to buy a booster box in there. I'm for it. I'm for it. Yeah, it's a good game. I have fun with it. Yep. Um, Max was saying that he wasn't, he was uh, not looking forward to it only because there's like certain uh, times where you would give. Uh, hmm. What's it called? Priority, like yep. past priority that don't happen. But it's just every time, every card that I've needed to use, I've had a time to use it. They they does pass priority. He's just an MTGO. Like before they draw, there's like a there's like a stop, and it's it's still there. It's just if you have nothing to do, it won't do yes, that. It's yeah yeah. It's exactly because it tells me I have um one of the decks I play. I usually have an ability at the beginning. I can do it whenever I want. It's like, do you want to draw now? Yes. Mm-hmm. Do you want to? There is one thing I wish you could do. Press space bar when they reveal a card. Mm. So if you play something like reveal the top card of your deck, you actually have to physically click done. You can't just space through it. Oh, yeah. True. Um, one thing that's kind of interesting, I don't know if they'll keep it in, is they will permanently reveal a card that you have revealed from their hand. Super weird. So we, one of my black decks I made, it, I played duress turn one. Cool, I'm going to see six cards in your hand for a while. Right. And then... The cards that come back into kind of your hand, but are off to the right and are like like shimmery. anything you can play from the graveyard. Yeah. Yep. That one's not bad. Yeah, that's fine. It confused me for a little bit because it's super subtle and like I just didn't really catch that it went there. And yep. so I was like trying to cast. I was like, oh, I got I drew it or something, and it was like pay uh, like discard a, or exile another creature. And it was like you have to actually click on your deck and then and then click on a card. It was like I didn't know what I was. So yeah. That's good. A little more customization would be nice, like you said, being able to change your portrait to mm-hmm. maybe that's some maybe it'll be a cosmetic paid thing. Like cool, yeah. you got, here's all the basic here's a couple walkers. ones, yeah. yeah. But if you want to be shiny Karn, right. then right. Um but as far as like playing the game, it's way it's just funner. There's like more fun. There's music like little music in the background. The creatures, some creatures have like little animations. They come out. Usually like legendary creatures or big creatures. Have you played a saga yet? Yeah. And the, the scroll yep. comes out. It's super it's like way cooler. The planeswalkers become full art cards. Because mm-hmm. oh, nice. you just click on them and tell and you they what to talk. Be- yeah. Yep. So Chandra or whatever. And Karn is like they talk every time they attack and it's super, super cool. Wow. Yeah. It's great. Thanks, wizards. Do his thing. I did. He did. Yeah. <laughs> did you? Ch- a stupid question. Did you check your junk mail? Yes. Okay. Mm. Well, that's gonna be it for another edition of the Peach Smodcast. Smodcast. The Peach Smircher Smodcast, <laughs> featuring Wes. Uh, if you like what you saw, head on over to YouTube. Give us a like and subscribe. Go to Twitter. Follow us. Go to the other things and follow us. Support the show on patreoncom slash derailed. And of course, it's bring your friend to Derailed Month, so go and show this to your friend, and maybe they'll talk about it, and you can talk about your favorite uh, Disneyland snacks and your magic affinity. Or maybe you've never played magic, and then you can try it, because it's super fun, and you should. It's a money hole, though, so make sure your parents give you your credit card. (laughs) If you are going to play magic, the dual decks are a really good starting point. There you go. 260 card decks, good against each other. See Mm -hmm. if you actually like the game or not. Good tip truth until next time we'll see you next time